Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for coming. So the uh, objectives of today's talk are mainly to review the evidence surrounding the uh, medical management uh, of BPH. So these are sort of the different topics that I'll go through. I'll review the evidence for um, uh, alpha antagonists, 5 ARIs, and combination <coughs> therapy. Now, th this uh, a lot of this is not new, but um, I thought it'd be good review for the uh, for the residents. Uh, some of those clinical trials still come up on a lot of exams. Uh, some of the newer data are in the PDE5 inhibitors, both as a monotherapy and combination therapy with alpha blockers. Um, there's also some uh, new data on antimuscarinics uh, in patients with uh, bladder outlet obstruction, both as monotherapy and again in combination therapy. And uh, there's some emerging data on uh, Mirabegron as well. And uh, we'll talk about the uh, safety profile of that medication in uh, bladder outlet obstruction. Uh, this slide here um, just sort of demonstrates the high incidence of uh, lower urinary tract symptoms uh, across uh, several different uh, epidemiologic studies over the 6th, 7th, and 8th uh, decades of life. And um, obviously, it's one of the most common problems uh, presenting to uh, urological care. It's important to realize that not all uh, lower urinary tract symptoms uh, are as a result of BPH. Um, uh, many benign conditions can cause LUTs, and uh, BPH is sort of just part of the spectrum. And so the uh, goals of evaluation are really to characterize the type of uh, LUTs and the bother associated with them, identify the comorbidities and uh, contributors, whether it be systemic disease, uh, neurologic conditions, uh, medications, particularly diuretics, uh, or uh, dietary and lifestyle factors uh, that can contribute as well. Uh, the CUA, AUA, and EAU all have uh, clinical practice guidelines um, on the management of BPH. Uh, all three recommend uh, a thorough history and physical examination, some sort of symptom inventory, uh, most commonly the IPSS and urinalysis as minimum evaluation. The AUA uh, does recommend a PSA in patients with a life expectancy of at least 10 years and in whom a diagnosis of prostate cancer makes a difference in management. But also in uh, several studies it's been shown that the baseline uh, PSA is actually prognostic with respect to uh, disease progression in terms of urinary retention or the risk of surgery. Uh, the AUA also recommends avoiding diary if the uh, primary symptom is nocturia. Uh, Non-invasive uh, flow rate and uh, PVR is recommended by the EAU um, in all patients. Uh, and again, it serves as both a um, uh, prognostic factor and then also to help um, tailor the uh, appropriate therapy. Uh, pressure flow studies are only indicated in um, uh, you know, complex cases with lots with suspected neurologic issues or failed uh, previous surgery. Uh, renal function testing should only be done in patients at risk of chronic kidney disease as having renal insufficiency primarily from BPH and bladder outlet obstruction is actually very rare. And then uh, imaging and cystoscopy is indicated. So there are, main, there are three main uh, pathophysiologic contributors in uh, BPH. There's a physical um, uh, bladder outlet obstruction from the gland itself, which is a static component. And then the increased smooth muscle tone and resistance uh, forms a dynamic component. And the interplay of those two leads to the uh, voiding or obstructive symptoms. Uh, the bladder also responds to outlet obstruction um, with detrusor instability, uh, low compliance, and then hypo or hypercontractility. And that leads to the storage or irritative symptoms. So the treatment model uh, focuses on those three pathophysiologic mechanisms. The uh, five ARIs um, are thought to decrease the physical uh, outlet obstruction by shrinking the gland. Uh, alpha antagonists obviously act on the smooth muscle uh, tone and it's thought that the um, PDE5 inhibitors uh, behave in a similar fashion. The antimuscarinics uh, mainly target the uh, detrusor response to outlet obstruction, but there's also emerging evidence that the PDE5 inhibitors um, uh, can behave in a similar fashion as well. Uh, prior to starting pharmacotherapy, it's important to consider uh, some of the conservative uh, treatment options in patients as well. Uh, obviously, uh, dietary factors in terms of reducing fluid and avoiding uh, bladder irritants, uh, bladder retraining, uh, review of medications, uh, especially diuretics, and uh, treating other uh, contributing factors such as constipation. Obviously, uh, important to consider uh, which patients uh, are good candidates for watchful therapy um, and conservative management. Obviously, the original degree of bother is important, but uh, several studies have shown that the, that the severity of symptoms at baseline, uh, prostate volume, baseline PSA, uh, maximum flow rate, and even the baseline PVR are, are all uh, prognostic features. <coughs> 
So the first uh, class of medications I'll briefly discuss are the uh, alpha antagonists. There are three main uh, alpha-1 subtypes. The alpha-1A is the primary GU subtype with uh, high concentrations in the prostate, bladder, neck, uh, and seminal vesicles. The 1B subtype is uh, located in the vascular smooth muscle, and that's responsible for the uh, hemodynamic uh, uh, adverse events of some of these medications. And then alpha-1D is in the spinal cord and nasal passages, and blockage of that results in uh, nasal congestion. There are several um, of these medications on the market. Torazosin and doxazosin are the older uh, non-selective agents with um, uh, high rates of uh, hemodynamic adverse events. Alfizosin, although it's a non-selective uh, agent, does not seem to have the same adverse effects on blood pressure. Uh, Tamsulosin and psilodosin are the newer uh, subtype selective uh, agents. Uh, these are some of the take-home points uh, for alpha blockers that have been shown um, throughout various studies. They're the first line of therapy for bothersome, moderate to severe LUTs and treatment of acute urinary retention. They reduce the IPSS symptom score by about 30 to 40 percent. They do have a beneficial effect on the maximum flow rate. They reduce both uh, storage and voiding symptoms. Uh, they do not affect prostate size or PSA and uh, do not alter the natural history of disease in terms of uh, reducing urinary retention or need for surgery. They're all considered uh, equally efficacious, and the efficacy can be seen as early as um, uh, one week in uh, several of the agents. The uh, Veterans Affair Cooperative Study was the first study to establish alpha blockers as a first-line uh, treatment of BPH. About 1,200 patients were randomized to terazosin, finasteride combination, or placebo, and they demonstrated that uh, terazosin monotherapy or combination um, was better than placebo in uh, reducing symptoms. Interestingly, they did not find a significant difference between finasteride and placebo, and they were uh, criticized for that. However, the patients in this study had uh, very small prostates and uh, very mild symptoms at baseline. The benefits of the alpha blocker started at two weeks, and the response uh, was maintained up to one year. Well, I mean, so some of the not criticized, but I mean, uh, a lot of the other studies did show a significant symptom reduction with five uh, AR, five ARIs. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, ALTIS study was a study that showed that uh, alpha blockers don't alter the um, uh, sort of the natural history of disease. They had about uh, 1,400 patients um, uh, randomized to alfizosin or placebo. And uh, alfizosin reduced uh, symptom progression, which was defined as a four-point or greater increase in the IPSS symptom score by 30%, but uh, there was no significant impact on the risk of uh, acute urinary retention or BPH-related surgery. These are some of the uh, important numbers from the ALTA study. The symptom progression in the placebo arm was about 15%. The overall risk of uh, urinary retention was 2%. 6% uh, of patients required... Um, uh, invasive treatment. The reduction in IPSS was about 30 percent, but there was also a significant placebo response, almost a five-point uh, reduction in the symptom score, and that's actually a common theme uh, in many of the uh, BPH studies. There's always a significant placebo response. Uh, this study I just uh, included for completion. It was the non-inferiority study of uh, psilodosin compared to uh, tamsulosin. Um, they demonstrated that there was, again, a 37 reduction in IPSS, which is seen with the other alpha blockers. Interestingly, that in the very highly subtype selective uh, agent, both storage and voiding symptoms were reduced. The greatest uh, symptom reduction was in the first two weeks. Uh, however, another study showed that uh, psilodosin was actually better than placebo as early as uh, three to four days of therapy. Uh, this table here shows the adverse events uh, compiled from some of the larger uh, alpha blocker studies. Uh, you can see that the non-selective agents have uh, high rates of um, uh, hemodynamic side effects, dizziness, orthostasis. Alfizosin, although non-selective, doesn't seem to have uh, a high rate of those side effects. Uh, Tamsulosin has higher rates of asthenia compared to the other agents. And the main issue with uh, psilodosin is abnormal ejaculation or retrograde ejaculation as high as 30% but the discontinuation rates uh, are still fairly low in the different studies, about 2%. The next are the 5 ARIs. There are two main subtypes. Uh, type 2 is the uh, subtype in the prostate. Um, 
There are two agents available on the market currently. Uh, Dutastride uh, inhibits both subtypes, and because of that, there's a greater reduction in the circulating levels of DHT, but the intraprostatic DHT reduction is equivalent between the two agents. Dutastride has a longer half-life, and both agents uh, reduce PSA by about 50%, and prostate volume by 15 to 30 percent after uh, six months of treatment. The uh, PLESS study was the first study to show that the 5 ARIs alter disease progression. They randomized um, a large number of patients to either 5 milligrams of finasteride or placebo for four years. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You could even space it out yeah. Yeah. once you reach a steady state. I mean, the implication of that in a lot of the studies, the uh, washout period for dutasteride was always longer than finasteride. I was always wondering why. I guess it's because of the um, longer half-life. But... Okay. Uh, yeah, so the uh, PLUS study was a uh, first study, I believe, to show the... Um, to show that 5 ARIs uh, altered disease progression against patients were randomized to placebo or finasteride for four years, and they demonstrated a 55% um, risk reduction in the need for invasive treatment and almost 60% reduction in the risk of acute urinary retention, and there was still no plateau response at uh, four years out. Um, in contrast to the uh, VA cooperative study, uh, PLES also showed a significant uh, symptom reduction with um, finasteride. The absolute decrease compared to placebo was about two to three points, and the difference was significant starting at approximately uh, eight months. Uh, overall, there was an 18% uh, reduction in prostate volume, uh, which mostly occurred in the first year and then stabilized after that. Uh, patients in the placebo arm had about a 15% increase in uh, prostate volume. To summarize the uh, 5 ARI monotherapy efficacy, uh, both agents reduce symptoms by about 20 to 30 percent. Uh, there's a 20 percent uh, reduction in prostate size, which has been shown in several studies. They do improve the maximum um, uh, flow rate by about uh, 2 cc's per second, and there's a 50 percent reduction in the need for uh, surgery or urinary retention. There's no difference between the uh, two agents, um, as shown in the EPIC study, and improvements are seen at approximately six to nine months and can be sustained uh, up to four years. Uh, these are the common, most common adverse events associated with the 5 ARIs from the two um, uh, large MTOPS and combat trials, uh, the most common being decreased libido, uh, erectile dysfunction, and ejaculatory disorders. I believe there is FDA warnings for um, Increase in possible increased incidence of male breast cancer and then the development of high risk disease. I thought the uh, male breast cancer part was interesting. Most of the uh, data on um, the linkage has been from a case series of about 50 cases where patients develop breast cancer one to three years after they started taking 
uh, five ARIs. In the major studies using the five ARIs, there's o only mTOPS had a con sort of a um, eye-catching increase in the rate of breast cancer. There were four patients in the um, uh, treatment arms. Uh, there were two breast cancers in PCPT, but one was in the treatment arm and one was in the uh, placebo arm. This was a recently published study. Um, uh, this group reviewed the uh, U.S. LifeLink uh, health plan claims and identified about uh, 340 breast cancer cases and compared them to about 7,000 well-matched controls. And they found that there was actually no association between uh, five ARIs and increased risk of uh, male breast cancer. <coughs> I'll briefly touch on uh, combination therapy. These are the two main uh, studies looking at the combination of alpha antagonists and uh, five ARIs, the mTOPS and combat trials. <coughs> mTOPS uh, had a placebo uh, arm, whereas the combat does not have a placebo arm. Follow-up was fairly similar between the two studies. In terms of uh, eligibility criteria, the combat was designed to select patients at a higher risk of uh, progression. So they selected patients for prostate volumes of greater than 30 and baseline PSAs greater than 1.5. The primary endpoint <coughs> in mTOPS was overall disease progression, and the primary endpoint in combat at four years was um, time to urinary retention or a need for BPH related surgery. Uh, in mTOPS, they defined uh, clinical progression as either a four point or greater increase in uh, IPSS, urinary retention, incontinence, renal, renal insufficiency, or uh, recurrent UTIs. Most of the patients that progressed progressed um, <coughs> by symptom uh, progression almost 80%, 12% developed urinary retention. Uh, renal insufficiency did not develop in any patients um, based on how they defined it, and uh, urinary tract infections were very rare. Uh, this slide here shows the main uh, results from the primary endpoint of mTOPS, uh, basically a decrease in uh, overall clinical progression with combination therapy. It was a 66% relative risk reduction with combination therapy and uh, 34 to 39% with uh, monotherapy depending on uh, which one you look at. These are some of the interesting numbers from uh, mTOPS. The number needed to treat to prevent uh, any clinical progression with combination therapy was 8.4. Uh, and uh, But if the prostate was greater than 40 cc's at baseline, that number decreased to about 5. Uh, both a, uh, combination therapy also reduced the risk of uh, urinary retention and surgery, and that was um, similar to finasteride monotherapy. The number needed to treat uh, to prevent um, need for one invasive procedure was about 26, and again, the number dropped to about 16 uh, at uh, larger P uh, uh, baseline prostate size. Um, I'd have to go back and look at that. I have a little top of my head. Uh, some of the other interesting numbers from <coughs> uh, mTOPS uh, with respect to combina uh, sorry, symptom reduction and flow rate, uh, combination therapy was better than um, doxazosin monotherapy, which in turn was better than finasteride. Again, there was a significant placebo response, almost a five-point uh, reduction in symptoms. The prostate volume reduction was about 20%. 25% uh, volume increase with uh, placebo or um, alpha blocker monotherapy. The side effects that were more common in the combination group compared to monotherapy were abnormal ejaculation, peripheral edema, and shortness of breath. Uh, four men developed breast cancer, um, which uh, we talked about, and the discontinuation rate was about 20 to 30%, uh, depending on which arm you look at. Uh, this was a post-hoc analysis of uh, mTOPS, and um, they looked at the benefit of combination therapy over monotherapy uh, stratified by prostate size, and the greatest benefit, again, was in patients with uh, prostate volumes greater than uh, 40 uh, cc's at baseline. This was another post-hoc analysis of the same trial. They looked at the uh, predictors of uh, overall clinical progression, and they found that um, uh, prostate volume at baseline, PSA, uh, maximum flow rate and PVR were predictors of progression 
overall and prostate volume and PSA predicted um, uh, the risk of uh, acute urinary retention. Uh, next we'll uh, briefly discuss the combat trial. We I discussed the eligibility criteria earlier. These are the actual um, uh, baseline characteristics between the two studies and the two that are significantly different are the um, is the high baseline PSA and uh, prostate volume uh, in the combat study. Uh, this slide shows a primary endpoint uh, of combat, again, a significant uh, reduction uh, in the risk of urinary retention or BPH-related surgery uh, with combination therapy com compared to monotherapy, and uh, combination therapy, again, uh, reduced the overall uh, clinical progression as well. With respect to the uh, risk of acute urinary retention, the difference between combination therapy and uh, Flomax was and sorry and um, alpha blocker monotherapy was significant after about um, eight months of treatment. Uh, this graph here sh uh, shows that the combination therapy was better than dutasteride starting at about three months uh, of therapy. Combination was better than tamsulosin at about nine months of treatment, and this is with respect to symptom improvement. And uh, this sort of makes sense means that the alpha uh, antagonists exert. Um, their effect in the first six to nine months of therapy while the 5-ARI is, is exerting its effect by reducing prostate size. After there's a reduction in the prostate size, the alpha um, antagonist starts to lose efficacy. And you can see that uh, at about the 15 to 18 month range here where the symptom reduction with uh, tamsulosin actually decreased, whereas there was a stable response with the 5-ARI and combination therapy. Uh, again, the postdoc analysis shows that uh, patients with uh, smaller prostates do not necessarily benefit from uh, combination therapy. So the next question is, is it possible to stop the alpha blocker? Um, when is the best time and what are the implications in terms of uh, symptom deterioration? There have been three uh, studies on this. Two are prospective open label. One of them, the PROACT study, was a Canadian study. And there's one placebo controlled uh, randomized trial, uh, the SMART. Uh, patients in the PROACT study were treated with finasteride and um, alpha antagonists for nine months, and then the alpha antagonist was taken away, and they had finasteride monotherapy for three months, uh, and then uh, half of those patients moved on to the extension phase of the study and were treated for six months uh, with monotherapy. The primary endpoint was uh, IPSS equivalence um, at 12 and 18 months, and they defined that as a difference um, of two or less in the symptom score. After three months of uh, monotherapy, there was a statistically significant increase in the IPSS scores and deterioration of quality of life, but that was still less than their uh, two-point cutoff. At 18 months, however, the um, IPSS scores were not significantly different than at the end of the uh, dual therapy period. But there's a significant selection bias there. Probably the patients that had symptom deterioration at 12 months dropped out of the study and the patients that continued were the ones that actually did not have a worsening in their symptoms, and that's why you see the improvement uh, at 18 months. Uh, SMART was a, a better designed study. Patients were uh, randomized to ongoing combination therapy or uh, dutasteride monotherapy and placebo after 20 weeks of uh, combination therapy. Uh, after the withdrawal of the alpha blocker, there was a transient uh, uh, worsening of symptoms and the majority occurred in patients with uh, severe symptoms at baseline. But at 36 weeks, there was no significant difference in the symptom scores. Uh, these charts here show the proportion of successful alpha blocker withdrawals, and that was defined um, by the percentage of patients that had stable or improving symptoms after the alpha blocker was taken away. Overall, 77% of patients uh, said that they had no significant worsening in their symptoms with the alpha blocker withdrawal. But when you look at patients with severe symptoms at baseline, um, only about 60% had a successful uh, withdrawal by their definition. So in conclusion, the majority of patients uh, tolerate the alpha uh, antagonist withdrawal after six to nine months of therapy, but consideration should be given to longer duration of uh, combination therapy in patients with uh, severe baseline symptoms. The uh, next class are the uh, phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Uh, the schematic here uh, shows the <clears throat> distribution of uh, uh, phosphodiesterase type 5 in the lower urinary tract. There's a very high concentration in the bladder neck and uh, in the prostatic uh, stroma. 
and uh, it's thought to exert its effect partially by uh, relieving outlet obstruction, the uh, dynamic component similar to alpha blockers. There's also a high concentration of uh, phosphodiesterase type 5 in the pelvic vasculature. And this uh, theory of uh, pelvic vascular insufficiency is thought to contribute to lower urinary tract symptoms. We know there's an epidemiologic link between uh, metabolic syndrome and BPH, and it's thought that the um, uh, vascular insufficiency results in um, you know, chronic inflammation, chronic ischemia, which then induces uh, morphological or structural changes in the bladder and prostate, which in turn can cause uh, lower urinary tract symptoms. And by restoring the pelvic blood flow, which has been demonstrated in human and animal models, the PDE5s are thought to sort of um, uh, alter that pathophysiologic mechanism. There's also some emerging evidence to show that the PDE5 inhibitors affect the afferent uh, neuronal pathways. Um, studies have shown that uh, tr uh, administrating PDE5s um, during the urodynamic studies actually reduces the sensation uh, of bladder filling. And in um, animals with spinal cord injury, PDE5 therapy um, improves bladder capacity and actually decreases the amplitude of the um, uh, premature detrusor contractions. And so it's thought by affecting the afferent neuronal processes um, that it sort of alters uh, some of the neuronal plasticity. So overall, the mechanisms of action are a smooth muscle relaxation, improvement in the pelvic blood supply, and a possible effect on um, afferent nerve signaling. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, I'm not going to go over that slide in detail. There's three ma main types of the market. Most of the studies are on Tadalafil, again, given the longer half-life and uh, the fact that it's amenable to one daily dosing. <clears throat> uh, most of the clinical studies with PDE5s uh, uh, work around Tadalafil. Um, the studies on Sildenafil are mostly uh, open label and retrospective. There's one placebo controlled uh, randomized study on Vardenafil, but again, most of the evidence um, is with Tadalafil. <clears throat> this was the dose finding study uh, with Tadalafil. Patients were randomized to receive 2.5 to 20 milligrams versus placebo for 12 weeks, and the primary endpoint was a symptom reduction. They demonstrated that at a dosage of above 5 milligrams, there was a significant reduction in symptoms compared to placebo. Uh, however, uh, there were significantly higher rates of back pain and myalgia in patients taking 10 and 20 milligrams. Overall, about 90% completed the study at the 5 milligram dosage. Uh, this was the first study to show um, uh, superiority of Tadalafil over placebo uh, with respect to symptom reduction. Patients were treated for 12 weeks and they demonstrated um, a 2 to 3 point symptom reduction compared to placebo, uh, which was significantly noted at 4 weeks of therapy and onwards. Interestingly, the PDE5s do not change the maximum flow rate despite the fact that it was thought that they mainly work by smooth muscle relaxation and the results were maintained up to one year in an extension phase of the study. Yeah, that's the IPSS score. Uh, this uh, was a post-doc analysis of the four uh, largest Tadalafil uh, RCTs, and they looked at whether there was a difference in response between patients who had erectile dysfunction at baseline and patients who did not have ED, and they found no significant difference. The response uh, was the same, and also there was no uh, difference with respect to prostate volume at baseline. Uh, severity of symptoms at baseline or prior uh, alpha blocker or PDE5 use. So then the question is, does the improvement in erectile function artificially um, you know, result in an improvement in the overall quality of life scores and uh, IPSS scores? This was a recently published study. They, uh, this was a post-hoc analysis, again, of four of the Tadalafil uh, randomized trials, and uh, their analysis showed that the correlation between IPSS and the erectile function questionnaire was actually quite weak. And the square of the correlation coefficient was about 8%, or 8, which means that uh, they, according to their analysis, only 8% of the IPSS change can be explained by improvement in erectile function, whereas 92% um, of the PDE5 effect on symptom reduction is direct. Uh, I mentioned that th there's no significant increase in maximum flow rate and um, so some, uh, some people raise the issue that potentially PDE5s could be having adverse effects on uh, bladder contraction. Uh, 
Um, this particular study looked at um, the urodynamic safety of Tadalafil. They randomized patients to 20 milligrams or placebo for 12 weeks, and they looked at various um, urodynamic parameters, including maximum flow, the detrusor pressure at maximum flow, and the bladder contractility index, and they found no significant uh, difference between the two. So their conclusion was that, at least in the short term, there are no adverse um, uh, uh, factors on urodynamics with uh, PD-5 inhibitors. Pardon me? Yeah, and, and in this particular one, the uh, uh, symptom reduction wasn't actually that significant, but it wasn't power to show that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, most of the studies now show that there is symptom improvement, but you know, with no significant increase in maximum flow. So that's why it's thought some of the beneficial effects is from increased pelvic blood flow. Why would improved erectile dysfunction Well, you know, they, they thought that, may, I mean, the IPSS is validated for urinary function, but, you know, they thought that, because a lot of the studies also ask about overall patient satisfaction. They wanted to tease out whether the perceived improvement is from improved erectile function or actually from imp imp improved lungs. What was the funding for these studies? Um, some of them were pharmaceutical funded, some of them were uh, you know, grants, but I have to go back and look. <coughs> This is the uh, sort of the only study I'm aware of that uh, compared uh, PDE5 to alpha antagonists. Um, they compared to Dalafil, uh, Tamsulosin, and placebo, but it was actually uh, not powered as a non-inferiority study. It was only powered to show uh, superior of monotherapy to uh, placebo. So I don't think it's a very useful study. The only interesting thing it did show was that there was a significant uh, symptom reduction as early as one week um, in both. Um, uh, PD-5 inhibitor and uh, tamsulosin. Uh, several studies have looked at whether the combination of a PD-5 and alpha uh, antagonists up front is beneficial. There have been five small studies. The meta-analysis shows that there, there's a modest uh, benefit, but the confidence interval is really wide, and there's only about 200 patients in uh, all five studies combined. So the evidence is not very strong. <coughs> Uh, there's one study that looked at um, uh, whether combination therapy with a 5 ARI. Th this is these are all five milligram dosages. Yeah. <clears throat> there was one study that looked at the combination of uh, PD5 inhibitor and um, uh, 5 ARI. I thought this was also fairly poorly designed because they they only uh, treated patients for six months, and so you don't necessarily expect a symptom reduction with finasteride monotherapy within the first six months, so I, I don't think that was well designed. You know, they did show that um, there's an improvement in the erectile function scores with the combination therapy, so, but, um, you know, that's not very surprising. It was published in Journal of Neurology, but I didn't think that was, uh, that was a useful study. Uh, these are the uh, adverse events reported in the trials with the uh, 5 milligram uh, Tadalafil, the most common being headache, uh, dyspepsia, and uh, myalgia. <coughs> So in conclusion, uh, Tadalafil 5 milligrams is the most studied agent and the only FDA-approved agent for treatment of BPH-related LUTs. Um, the imp there is an improvement in uh, symptoms, about a 2 to 3 point um, decrease in the IPSS symptom score, uh, starting at uh, 1 to 4 weeks of treatment, and in one study maintained up to one year. Um, they're equally efficacious in patients with and without uh, erectile dysfunction. There's no effect on the uh, maximum flow rate unless it's used in combination with an alpha blocker. And uh, at least no adverse urodynamic features on short-term uh, follow-up. And very modest benefit when uh, combining it with an alpha blocker. I think the question that really hasn't been addressed in um, any of the studies are whether it actually alters the uh, natural history of BPA. So whether long-term therapy would decrease the risk of uh, urinary retention or a surgery um, analogous to uh, 5 ARIs. <clears throat> the uh, last class that I'll talk about are the anti-muscarinics. Um, uh, the mechanism of action, we all know, there's an abundance of uh, type 2 and 3 muscarinic uh, 
uh, receptors in the bladder and uh, the anti-muscarinics are thought to mitigate the detrusor hypercontractility uh, in response to outlet obstruction. They see that in about 47, 70% of patients with um, outlet obstruction. There's also high concentrations of the type 3 receptor in the uh, uh, prosthetic stroma and it's also thought to decrease uh, outlet resistance when uh, administering these medications. Um, and there's some emerging data that there are uh, effects on afferent nerve signaling um, and alterations in perception of bladder filling similar to the PDE5s. And then clinically, men obviously have both storage and voiding symptoms, and the storage symptoms are often more bothersome. <coughs> Uh, most of the trials on antimuscarinics were done in the context of add-on therapy in patients that actually had residual symptoms after a period of um, uh, alpha blocker therapy. The PVR in most of these um, studies were less than 200. Most did show a, a significant improvement from baseline, but there was also a significant placebo response. Three of the studies showed a significant response compared to placebo uh, with a low risk of overall urinary retention, uh, only 0 to 3 percent. The TIME study was the first study to look at the combination of um, antimuscarinics uh, with an alpha blocker up front and compare that to monotherapy and placebo. <clears throat> Again, PVR in this uh, cohort was less than 200, and um, the patients didn't appear to have a high rate of uh, bladder outlet obstruction. The mean uh, maximum flow was 12 to 13. They showed that combination therapy reduced um, symptoms, improved quality of life, and uh, reduced urgency, urgent continence, frequency, and nocturia, whereas the alpha blocker monotherapy only reduced the IPSS symptom score, and the anti-muscarinic monotherapy only reduced urgency and continence. So there's some evidence that the combination therapy uh, is superior to either monotherapy alone. Uh, this was a post hoc analysis of the TIME study, and they looked at um, uh, patients with small and large glands. In patients with large prostates, combination therapy appeared to be uh, more efficacious in terms of symptom reduction and reducing urgency, uh, frequency, and urgent continence, whereas in patients with smaller prostates, uh, monotherapy either with capsulosin or uh, with an antimuscarinic uh, was efficacious. This was a recently published study, uh, Neptune. Uh, they again looked at tamsulose and monotherapy compared to two different um, arms of combination therapy with solifenacine and uh, placebo. Uh, this group seemed to have higher rates of bladder outlet obstruction. The mean uh, maximum flow was only nine. And they demonstrated a significant symptom reduction in all three treatment arms compared to placebo, but there was no significant difference um, in symptom reduction between uh, combination and uh, alpha blocker monotherapy. Yeah. It was solifenacy, uh, uh, Vesicare. Um, they used six and nine milligrams. It was a European study, so I think doses here are five and ten, but they use six and nine milligrams. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, they didn't demonstrate uh, there was a slightly less frequency with combination therapy, but really no difference in the hard endpoints in urgency, urgent continence, or pad use. But despite that, um, patients reported better quality of life scores with combination therapy compared to the uh, alpha blocker monotherapy. Um, uh, these are the adverse effects associated with antimuscarinics, at least in combination with alpha blocker from the available trials. Most common uh, is dry mouth. Discontinuation rate was about 2 to 9 percent. It was a very small, um, clinically insignificant increase in PVR, about 15 cc's and no change in the maximum flow rate. So in conclusion, uh, their antimuscarinics are safe as add-on to beta blocker monotherapy in patients who have residual um, storage symptoms after alpha blocker therapy. Uh, improvement in efficacy with de novo combination does not seem to be large. Uh, there should be a consideration given to uh, combination therapy upfront in patients with larger prostates and predominantly uh, storage symptoms and there's a low risk of uh, urinary retention. And finally, the last two slides, I just wanted to mention uh, Mirabegron, which is the um, new beta-3 uh, receptor agonist, and the mechanism of action, again, is thought to be similar to anticholinergics, uh, mitigating the detrusor uh, hypercontractility, and its potential for use in uh, BPH would be, again, in patients with residual storage symptoms instead of an antimuscarinic, given the more uh, favorable side effect profile. But the question was, is it safe in uh, patients with bladder outlet obstruction?
This was a recently published study that, again, they looked at the urodynamic safety. They gave mirabegron uh, to patients who actually had equivocal or confirmed bladder outlet obstruction on urodynamics. They had patients in placebo, 50 and 100 milligram dosages. And again, they found no significant difference between the uh, adverse urodynamic parameters. Um, there was one uh, urinary retention in the 100 milligram group and um, a clinically insignificant increase in uh, PVR of about 30 cc's. Uh, this was an abstract from the most recent European meeting. They looked at add-on urobegron on top of uh, alpha antagonist therapy in patients with residual uh, storage symptoms. Um, they had 37 men who they prospectively followed who were on an alpha blocker with uh, significant frequency and urgency, and they treated them with mirabegron 50 milligrams for four weeks. Uh, they showed a, um, a modest improvement in the uh, IPSS score. None of the patients developed urinary retention, and um, one had an allergic reaction, and only one uh, patient with dry mouth. So a better, a more favorable side effect profile compared to the anti uh, So in conclusion, there's minimal evidence uh, for use of uh, mirabegron and BPH uh, and bladder outlet obstruction. The short-term urodynamic safety uh, has been demonstrated in one a study in men with equivocal or confirmed obstruction. Uh, there's a low risk of urinary retention, and the uh, side effect profile is favorable compared to anti-muscarinics. That's all I have. Thank you. <coughs>